Thank you. Uh, Council Mayor Lubega, you, you have 10 minutes within which, and please address us on new matters that were raised. Thank you, my Lord. Um, like my land friend, Mr. Edwin Karujire, having adjusted my height, permit me to put the microphone up because it seems to be shorter than me. My Lord, with um, respect to the submissions made by counsel for the first respondent, first, I am glad that the application to withdraw is not opposed except for the reasons. On that alone, I invite your lordships to find pleasure in allowing the application. Number two, with respect to the um, alleged falsehoods, as well as the so many reasons given by counsel for the, pet for the first respondent to disadvantage or disable the prayers that we have made, I have the following to say. One, it is within the right of a petitioner stroke applicant to express himself to court on his feelings. One thing I do not and will never condone as a lawyer is attacking institutions that guarantee the safety and tranquility of the country. I have stated at the bar before and I continue to do so that we're never given an opportunity. I shall provide my professional voice whether to this particular client or any other person. But permit me also to submit, as I've submitted before, that the allegations against the applicant are so grave in nature to the extent that they are touching the relationship of a litigant and this court, a forum he chose to come to. Whoever is making these allegations ought to have done more. When you make reference to a press conference, there is documentary evidence that you can be able to procure. The same respondents who are able to go get a one chelangat from the police, go to NIRA, which is a department of state, and bring it to say that the signatures presented by the applicant are forgeries, even without producing the people who signed or are alleged to have made those signatures and supplied their declaration, I mean their national IDs. It is so disturbing that such a person cannot procure a recording from a TV station which he claims to have witnessed. And therefore simply comes to soil the name of an applicant in a bid to recruit sympathy from this honorable court. I am fortified that this court has emphasized before that it's not going to be guided by rumors, but rather evidence presented here. My lords, uh, yes, the applicant stroke petitioner. C Council Obega. Yes, my lord. Thank you for that part of submission. I, I, I agree with you. But can I also ask that if such evidence were used in the manner you're saying and they were proven, they can lead to very serious legal consequences. Uh, fortunately, this is not a matter before us now. I'm only saying because you raised it. For us, we're determining the matter of withdrawal and uh, we're not dealing with the other matters. They have only raised it to deny you denied the grounds of given for, for withdrawal. But it's not a matter for trial within us, before us. But we appreciate that if such evidence were brought before any court, as they allege and proven, they lead to very serious consequences. As a lawyer, you are aware of that. I have two answers to that, my lord, can, with can your I, permission. Can I supplement? There is Oscar Kihika Safidavid. Paragraph 30, 30 and 31. 
which talks about the same thing. And you have not, you, you have not replied to it. My Lord, I thank you again. Um, I have previously, in a similar allegation, made submissions with respect to Mr. Oscar Kihika. And that's why I said, you have no reason to believe this. Why? Because there is a way of presenting conclusive evidence to demonstrate that actually the applicant is as errant as he's being portrayed. I, my Lord, with respect to, to the question from the, my Lord CJ, the serious consequences, and um, that the matter is not for this honorable court for trial, but to consider whether to grant or not to, to exercise your discretion. First, I reiterate the first answer of the veracity of this, which is left hanging without an attachment. But the consequence is yes. As a lawyer, I know. As a lawyer, I know. And I submit that it is the duty of us all to give due respect and treat this honorable court, not only this court, but any court or institutions of state, with decorum. As to whether this should be used in the, or applied or looked at in, in, in the exercise of the discretion, that's why I'm submitting no. Why? Because it is left hanging. You have no reason to believe this affidavit of Mr. Oscar Kihika that the petitioner stroke applicant is in the conduct of disparaging and disrespect the court. If anything, the evidence, the evidence supplied by the Attorney General, which I agree with, my client is a regular user of the courts of law in this country whenever his rights have been transgressed upon. That is a demonstration that he believes in the rule of law and not jungle law as he's being presented. I mean, there is evidence on record. You know, you know what, what the learned attorney general said, I think the other person said, that your client is only happy with court if the court rules in his favor. The moment the court rules against him, then the courts and the other words, I cannot repeat them. You know, like feel what they are saying. That's what he said, but I'm giving the proper context, my lord, and the proper context in our humble submission is that the applicant is an ardent believer in the rule of law. That's why whenever brutalized, whenever transgressed upon, he runs to the same court. He's not running to anyone else. What the, the effect of the submission from the respondent from but, the bar... But, but when the court rules against him, then he goes to the people's court. Uh, that is the final court now above the Supreme Court. That's really what it means. And my Lord, in, in, in the honest belief that you have not believed that rumor, my Lord. <laughs> I know. Councillor Beggar, I want you now to address us on other things. But let me say this. As a Catholic, people pray a lot of things. For me, Jesus said, we say the Lord's Prayer. I say it twice every day. Yes, my Lord. And the one which I remember, it says even God should not lead us into temptation. I think the Lord lead the Attorney General who has said he wants to organize a meeting, which is a very good thing. Don't, don't lead them into temptation. <laughs> because for me, I would want this matter to remain where My Lord, I treat... And, and, we, and we do our things. Uh, with immense respect, my Lord, to the Attorney don't, General. Don't emphasize that area, that brain proof. Uh, no, I, I, proof I think... could be brought, I don't know, unless they are lying. <laughs> my Lord, the... the, 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 and, the that's why I was helping you. May don't I take pray? that route. Let us conclude this matter whatever has happened, let me repeat this, then you continue. As the judiciary of Uganda, which, we, which I had, we were never influenced by people who praise us or people who abuse us. You can abuse the chief justice, you can abuse the justices of the Supreme Court or the entire judiciary. But when you come before us and you're on the side of the law, we will protect you the insult you give from us notwithstanding. My Lord, that gives me comfort yes. that actually you're not aware of those insults because they do not exist. <laughs> and if they existed, you would have evidence before your Lordships. I think if 
I may advise counsel, why don't we restrict ourselves to the matter before us and avoid uh, the extraneous matters? My Lord, the, that's, no that, that's my prayer. Okay. And that's why I said that the matters placed here are extraneous to the extent that sim some, somebody simply comes to say, this man said he's going to the people's court. I agree with the counsel for the first respondent that this is the people's court because it is established in accordance with the constitution to exercise jurisdiction in accordance with the aspirations of the people of Uganda. As to whether, my lord, as to whether, my lords, that is the perception of either the petitioner, the respondent, or other people outside is not a matter for this forum. Like I did make an undertaking, anything that ridicules the independence and respect of this court, I stand with court. Thank you. Proceed. Proceed. Thank you, my lord. You with respect to court. Yeah. Thank you, my lords. Um, I think something again prejudicial has been said about the petition and his, ad and his advocates. Let me repeat, as advocates, we have done our work in accordance with our professional training and orientation. My Lord, a lot has been said in the background. May I invite you to look at that as a background, notwithstanding interpretation on the part of the parties, but the essential elements to satisfy you in exercising your discretion have been sat uh, satisfied and placed before your lordships that there is good cause to withdraw, to allow the withdrawal of this petition. I think um, a lot has been said about Con concluding, co costs concluding five minutes. with respect to, to costs and uh, the prayers First, there is no admission of offenses on the part of the applicant anywhere. The alleged forgeries are a concoction by a person who, has, who is being strangled before this court and trying to look for evidence to, to extricate himself. I believe it was within the right of the respondents to extricate themselves. But to the extent that the, uh, they refer to the signatures as forgeries without being uh, bringing conclusive evidence is also very, very unfortunate. My lords, on the prayer by the respondents that you be pleased to therefore declare in accordance with the section 59 of the Presidential Elections Act that the f first respondent was duly elected the guiding law is uh, subsection 4 of section 59. One, it reads, where no petition is filed within the time prescribed under subsection 2, or where the petition have, having been filed is withdrawn by the person who filed it, or is responded, or, or, or is dismissed by the petition, the Supreme Court, the candidate declared shall be um, declared elected shall conclusively be taken to have been duly elected. You do not need to make a declaration. It is not within your power. It will be up to... The, the person was already declared by the Electoral Commission. What, what does the law say? The, the law cited reads, by Council for the... There are, two prov there are two provisions, and I want to read both of them. Please do. Five. After due inquiry, under subsection three, the Supreme Court may dismiss the petition, declare which candidate was validly elected or annul the election. Now, your power to declare comes into play under subsection 5. What, uh, after you have had due inquiry into the petition, the process in subsection 4 is purely a political process. It is up to the respondents to say, since the petition has been withdrawn, therefore this man was uh, properly elected. For you to order or to declare that uh, the first respondent was duly elected, it can only come under five after you have uh, 
inquired into the petition, which for now, if you permit the withdrawal, you have not done. My lords, finally, on the issue of costs, I reiterate my earlier prayers, but let me conclude with this particular extract from the decision of Justice Sekoko, JSC. In our bando. Do, do that in two minutes. Please. Thank you, my lord. In our bando, pages 17 and 18, it is express. My lord, this is um, election petition number one of 2001. He says, even if, and quoting the Indian authority of, Cha, of Charan Lal Sao and others versus Singh 1985 LRC, page 31, that even if the election petition was frivolous, court should exercise its discretion not to award costs because of the public importance of an election petition. Does, does that cover even a vexatious one? It, it does. What, what, what your learned friends yes. are saying in their response, I'm not saying I agree with them, but they're, what they're saying is that the petition was, the petitioner was both vexatious and, the petition was both vexatious and frivolous. That's really what they're saying. My Lord, that will take us into the definition of both phrases, vexatious yes. Yes. and frivolous. One which does not disclose on the face of it reason for inquiry. Mm -hmm. If that was the kind of petition we presented, it would even have been one either rejected by the registry or struck out by way of uh, a preliminary objection. No, that, would this be, that would be on cause of action. You can have a cause of action, but you can still be very vexatious and frivolous. Yes, my lord. In, 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 in this case, we submit it was not, to the extent that it demonstrated... No, what I wanted to know, yes. I have not read the authority. Yes. It would cover both situations. It does. Okay. It does. Even champ to us causes, my lord, okay, okay. it would be, would be covered. Um, my lord, the second respondent has submitted that Ukasha, Ukasha Sekaja did not have, does not have you remember the, you had two minutes only. I'm now using the last one, my lord. Yes, yes. Does not have knowledge of the procurement issues. The first thing is what does the law require? The law requires a procurement process which is public, including an advert, for all lawyers who may wish to supply. It, it, there's no record that it was done. My Lord, the, of the, the, the authority I referred to, which I invited you to adopt and find persuasive of Justice Musota, involved the same law firm of Kampala Associated Advocates of procuring legal services. There was an opportunity. It is not true that they could not respond because this came by way of rejoinder. The practice of court is that there is even a such joinder. There is even an affidavit in rebuttal. There is even a provision for somebody to apply for leave to respond to a particular uh, averment. It is also not true that this is so contentious. No. Every lawyer knows the procurement processes and laws in this country. And I want to assume lawyers that really went through law school. Uh, and Ukasha says, I know that this process was not followed. It is illegal. It is irregular. It involves the same... Okay, I'm trying to understand. So your point is, even, this, even if this court were inclined to award cost, then the council, the provision for instruction fee and yes, the other cost which are attendant to council's uh, participation and so on, should be excluded. They would not be entitled to a coin. But that does not mean the second respondent, is it second? Yes. First, the second and the first and second. Oh, it doesn't mean they will not be entitled to cost. No, no, it doesn't apply. I, in, that, in, that, in my submission, I said specifically with respect to the second respondent. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Yes. Would it mean the second respondent would not be entitled to cost? Or if it is being taxed, 
the lawyers who have represented it here will not be entitled to cost. My Lord, that's why I submitted mm. that to the extent that the procurement was illegal. Now, the second respondent, which costs would he present? Would, or would it present? And this was in specific reference to uh, the affidavit of the Honorable no, Steve the second respondent, counsel, the second respondent is here in the person of uh, Honorable Stephen Commissioner Tashobia. Tashobia, yes. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe the other... All that I need to know is... Oh, my Lord, you're referring... Are you saying what, whatever other cost, inclusive of hiring counsel, they will not be entitled? Or are you saying whatever other cost which can be permissible, if court is inclined to award cost, they would get it, but not for hiring I'll counsel. give two answers in the alternative, my Lord. Yes. The first is that they would not be entitled to anything for having engaged in an irregularity and illegality. But in the microscopic event that you find they should get something exclusive of the instruction to advocates, mm. then I would concede to transport to Commissioner Stephen Tashon. No, no, that's not for us. As a disbursement. <laughs> Councilor Lubega, you can wind up now. <laughs> so what is your final prayer? My final prayer, Re therefore. Reiterating your earlier prayer. To reiterate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. My Lord, I am talking about the denial in principle mm. that the taxing master should not even entertain a bill from the second respondent. Finally, my Lord, uh, you ha we have mentioned the, my colleagues who counsel for the first and the second and third respondent have um, submitted and I'm winding up that this, yes, that the provisions of yes. section 64 with respect to liability to... You would begin by asking me for more time because you've eaten... My Lord, may I be granted time, half a minute? Even the extra time. I'll give you two minutes. Thank you, my Lord. Please, please conclude. Half then, a minute, you would yawn and get finished. With yes. respect, my Lord, to the question of liability to pay costs as per section 64... Liability to order costs simply means this honorable court has the discretion. Yes. It is not mandatory, as submitted by my land friend, Mr. Ellison Karuhanga, that he, where they say shall be liable to suffer, to pay costs, it is mandatory. No, the word liability connotes that discretion. But even the word shall itself, it is not uh, mechanically uh, uh, mandatory as he thinks or he seeks to submit. Authority, my lords, number what, five. What is, what is mandatory in that one would be the liability. There is nothing mandatory in that. If you say it shall be liable, yes. what is mandatory would be the liability. No. Not, not the cost. No. What is mandatory? Not the suffering of cost. No. Nothing is mandatory in that, my lord. And the authority number five is a decision of this court. Sit and several versus Sam Kenjuba and the Electoral Commission. This Honorable Court, and my lords, I refer to section, I mean to pages 50, specifically page 55, on the interpretation of that word has been made. And that's why, my lords, even in previous petitions, you have not awarded costs. I pray that you continue to exercise your discretion judicially? Yes, because it is mandatory for court to exercise discretion. Obliged, my lord. On issue of cost. Obliged, my lord. The discretion, it is, it is not something they come and say, we have awarded cost. We may have not awarded yes. cost. May I rephrase that? Yes, it is exercise mandatory. Of discretion, it has got to be done judicially. True, my lord. You, you know the law on this. And that's why I'm saying, my lords, and I emphasize the word, that you continue yes. to exercise your discretion judiciously. Thank you, thank you. I yes. so pray. Thank you so, so much. Um, yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, I think there's a question from my learned uh, Council Segunda. Yeah. There was a, an authority which was supposed to be roasted. Where is it in the process? Have you abandoned it? No, my lord. After um, roasting it, the registry? I think one it, of our my, my lord. After roasting it, it could not come back to the same suspiciously contagious, contagious 
hands no, it was of the lawyers. The but is it on the record? I uh, believe, yes. We, we filed it in the registry. And uh, okay. it is, if it is not there, my lord, it is in transit. I think it's, okay, that's thank the you. first question. So, yes, thank you. Then I have a question for uh, counsel for the second respondent. Counsel um, Karuhanga? Yes, my lord. You submitted that, uh, and I'm glad it has been touched on uh, in the rejoinder, and, and the court has also, you know, talked about it earlier. That uh, paragraph, uh, the affirmance in the counsel for the petition, sorry, applicants' uh, affidavit regarding the issue of procurement are not within the personal knowledge of uh, the person, you know, the, the council, and therefore they should be struck out. That, that's, that, that's what you submitted. Yes, my lord. So my question to you, my reading of affirmance in this application, and, and um, I think we had considered this application, there are many other affirmance which fall in this category. Is it your position that court should similarly strike them, strike them out? Um, sorry, my lord, there are many other, I didn't get the... Abandonments which have been made, and time does not permit us to go into them, uh, which would seem to fall in that category. Soon yes. by... Um, They are not being within the personal knowledge of the person deponing. Yes, so my question is that, is it also your submission that the court should apply the same standard to air vermins where deponents have deponed matters that are not within their personal knowledge? My, my lord, I think the, if I can just... No, with respect, for example, to your client. Because I'm going to ask the same question to, to the yes to the second respondent. Is that your position? Yes, my, my lord. Our position is that the law governing affidavits is Order 19, Rule 3. In that particular affidavit, he deponed in his capacity as counsel for the applicant, and said he knew about certain processes of the second respondent, and did not show how he knew about them, where he had been informed about them. If there is any other affidavit that contains information. Where from the respondent, yes. That he knows how he, where he does not disclose the source of his knowledge or how he obtained it, it would certainly violate Order 19, Rule 3 of the Civil Procedure Rules. I think the, the, the ultimate principle is where a deponent is giving us information that the deponent surely does not know, like Mr. Sekaja does not know, then we cannot rely on evidence that a witness giver surely does not know, as opposed to so someone who said I had... No, 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 that's... I so you, are, you agree with me that that's a rule of general application. It applies to affirmance by the applicant, and so it also applies to affirmance by any party from, I mean, the respondents. Yes, it applies. I, I'll speak okay, for the second respondent, you. my lord. It would certainly apply. If you find evidence of ours, which our okay. witness didn't know, my lord, please strike it out. Thank you, thank you. So that takes me now to the uh, Land Attorney General. Um, you, you submitted, and, and this has been consistent, but in this application which is before us, uh, if I may recall, that the affirmance of the applicant that he was restrained and could not prepare for his case were not true. And your evidence in support is the affidavit of the land deputy attorney general, right? Which shows that the applicant was able to access, and you mentioned two in particular, his lawyer and his close associate, okay? So my question is that if the applicant says I was not able to access whoever I needed to access to prepare for my case. 
was the land that we know within the personal knowledge okay of who the applicant could have wanted to access to prepare for his case was that within his personal knowledge thank you very much um, my lord if we look at um, paragraph 4 of the Honorable um, Kafuzi's affidavit. Yes. In reply to the notice of motion. That is where he states that it is not true that the uh, applicant's mobile numbers were disabled as alleged, that I know that the applicant's advocate, ex Turiamu C. Majofre and Zaki Francis, a close associate of the applicant disclosed in their affidavits that they were communicating with the applicant on his mobile phone during the time when his, his movements were restricted. His basis was a disclosure in their affidavits. Yeah, but you, you use this, uh, the, the concern I have is that you used this, uh, this statement to make a general claim because the reason, one of the reasons the applicant is giving is that uh, he gave the reasons why he couldn't, you know, he's withdrawing, right? And part of it was the inability to access, which has continued to be, in, you know, has, has continued to resurface. It resurfaced in the application for amendment. It resurfaced in the application for leave to file, extension of time to file additional evidence. And it has also resurfaced here. Is that correct? The question of his restriction. Yes. Yes. And the, your answer has been consistent that you are relying on the uh, the averments of the land attorney, uh, deputy attorney general. Uh, in one of them, uh, a list of saying yes, he accessed his lawyer, and he accessed a close associate. Yes. So my question, is that statement, the accessing the lawyer and the a close associate, is that sufficient for you to make the claim you have made here that the applicant's averments about the effect of his, you know, the restriction, the tender restriction, had an impact on, you know, it's one of the reasons why he's saying he's withdrawing. Well, is I, there a bit, I mean, is it, I, is it right to transfer, you know, access to one person to say, because of this, therefore, he had access to everybody he wanted to access to I, prepare for his petition? Well, w w all we were doing is that. Because uh, those are your submissions, the land attorney general. We, on, on which I have already told you, my learned justice, that the government in Honorable Kafuzis, I've told you his source of the information, is the affidavit. And that was in response to the fact that he did not have contact, contact with the, to give instructions. So I'm saying that on the contrary, and by his own affidavit, he had contact. That's all that I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, but does the law say that uh, an intending petitioner once they have contact to one or two people, that is sufficient. Is that the law? Can you cite any provisions w well, I don't on which know. you are relying on to make that assertion? But I don't know whether the law gives a number of how many there must no, be. No, my question is, mm. do you have any law to make the assertion that if a petitioner says, I was constrained and couldn't access whoever I needed to access to prepare for my petition? Well, then the land attorney general says, no, you, came, you, you had access to two people. One, your team which you instructed, and the second one, your close associate. Do you have any basis, legal basis, for making those assertions? Well, the basis that we have is that he had contact with his associates and his lawyers. That's the basis that we have. Okay. He, for example, he made some averments that his witnesses were uh, abducted and harassed like I already said, um, he, 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 he does not provide any evidence of who these persons were of, of serious offenses. He, he does not give any evidence 
of, uh, of uh, the names of the people who were detained and therefore who made him, it impossible for him to present his case. Because had he done so, then we would have had the opportunity to controvert. That's all we are saying, Mary. Okay. So, um, anyway, I think I've had the answers I needed. Thank you, Landa Trinidad. So, yeah, thank you. And any other person? Uh, thank you, Landed Council, for the parties. We, we've been consulting within ourselves. We'll deliver a short ruling, which will be read out by Lady Justice Araj Amoko. Yes, my lord. Mm. Thank you, my lord, Chief Justice. Uh, this is the ruling of the court. Upon careful consideration of the application, the supporting affidavits, the submissions of land council for the parties, the authorities relied on and the law, and considering that the respondents have no objection to the application for withdrawal, leave is hereby granted to the petitioner as prayed. And the petition stands withdrawn. The reasons for allowing the withdrawal and the reasons and the determination of the issue, of course, shall be contained in a ruling to be delivered on notice. This ruling is signed by all members of the quorum. Thank you. <laughs> 